if you're following the storyline of this day, this continuation from yesterday's cardio video, then you would know that I needed to fill up the tank. I didn't get gas on the way back from cardio, I just got back home. So I'm itching to get to any time and go get a chest pump and then I realize zero mile range. So gotta fill this puppy up. What do you think? Am I am I crazy for leaving the car on and filling it up at the same time? I wanna stay warm. I really don't think this shit's gonna blow up with like a pretty high degree of certainty. I'm pretty sure that's just a wives tale anyway. But do what you want to do. I'm not your dad. So plan for chest. I mean, I'm going to ease into it. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to jump straight onto the Smith machine and do fucking you know, four plate bench and rip my pack all the way off. Come on, that's nuts. But I mean, at this point, I feel like I can load some weight. So let's um I'll just have to see what I'm ready for when I get in there. Also, I have to see what's taken. Because you gotta remember, this isn't a private gym. Ugh. I'm at the whim of the population. So if I want to start with cable press and all the cables are taken, then that's a boo-hoo moment where I've got to figure out, all right, do I either want to wait Ask to work in or find something else. And it depends on the gym. I'm more inclined to work in when I actually know the person because it's a little bit of an extra hassle when I ask somebody to work in because I got to you know, bring the tripod out and everything. So, you know, I take that into account. But if it's somebody chill I know, I'll just jump on the machine with them. I'm like, you're letting me work in. So, yeah, man, cable press, pec fly. This gym is really loaded. It's got a ton of hammer strength pressing equipment, which I love. So, eh, I'll just kind of have to see. And, of course, I'm still in the period of time post-tweak where I got my ears open. Not really my ears, but symbolically. Or I guess, uh, what's the word I'm really thinking of? Metaphorically? Yeah, metaphorically, I'm listening to how every rep is feeling. And like, let's say I go a little bit extra heavy on cable press and I can kind of feel a little something. And like a burn that's not, you know, burning in a bad way or pain in a bad way, that's your cue to say, hold up, wait a minute. Either stop, lighten the weight, or just move on to something else. I definitely don't think moderate weight is going to hurt me today. I was kind of fucking around on a chest press up at the hostile HQ gym. I didn't, I didn't even talk about that. That was fucking sick. We did a we did a crazy leg day. They had a lot of fancy leg machines. There was a squat machine that was. I liked it a lot to the point where, <laughs> like, I was kind of looking up just where. Um, Maybe not where to buy one, but just like looking at the machine online just to see. Because it felt super cool. So those videos are going to be on either the... Uh... Yes, yeah, so we did a leg day and then a back day. So both of those will be on the either the Hostile YouTube channel or the Fuad Abiyad Media channel. Sometimes it gets bounced around between the two. But that's why, um, that's why I posted the two cardio videos. Whenever I go on a, um, like a little trip with these guys, because we're going all over the place, fucking, you know, Pennsylvania and California, and then now up, you know, Windsor, Canada. So every time I'm gone for a couple of days from my normal schedule, when I'm the one recording the lifts, I'll pr kind of pre-record in a way so I can give you something to, just something to hold you over. And maybe not just hold you over, but hold you to it. Because there's a ton of you guys. I see the comments. You're watching this video every cardio or every post-workout meal. So I don't want to break the streak. You know, come on. But either way, those lifts were sweet. So I'm sure we're going to have a couple more trips to the hostile gym soon-ish. Usually weekend-focused. Because i got to go to lecture and 
take tests and do homework and whatnot during the week. Blech. So I'm just I'm just driving around the parking lot trying to th think of one last statement to say. But yeah, nothing. Chest. Since I'm going pretty light, I won't need to warm up too much. Like before I do a set of you know, really heavy Smith bench or dumbbell. You know, I'm going to take a while warming up, make sure everything's good, make sure my rotator cuffs feel nice, get a little blood flow on my elbows and my triceps, because I'm going to be, you know, loading everything in my torso that comes into play during heavy pressing, right? So if I'm benching the fucking 150s on an inclined, uh, like, on inclined dumbbell, I want to make sure my shoulders are warm, or else I'm asking for trouble, you know? Everything that comes into play in a movement especially when you're loading it heavily, that should be included in your warm-up. Right? Before I ever get into squats, usually that's after I've already done hamstrings. So hamstrings are warm, but I like doing some calves. I don't really do too much hip work. Like I don't do much hip mobility where you're kind of rolling around on the floor, bouncing your knees back and forth. For whatever reason, I've just never really gotten into that. But I always make sure to warm up on leg extension so my quads are warm. All right, we get the idea. So, that's all I gotta say, man. Let's park. I can already feel the beta alanine tingling me. Let's jump to something. Let's jump to something. So, since I'm not going heavy anyway, I think I'm gonna kind of do chest reverse than my typical style. Usually, it's always heavy pressing followed by more kind of slow squeezing flies or you know squeezing press movements too so i think today it's just in the spirit of changing it up get some flies going first now usually even though i do like changing it up i don't really recommend flies first because i'm all i'm really doing is kind of impeding my well not that it matters but i kind of do think it matters my strength output for pressing. So if I'm gonna do heavy pressing, I don't wanna get pre-exhausted with cable flies. I love using this as a warm up, but actual working sets in an, un, in an alternate reality where my chest was feeling totally perfect, I'd wanna jump straight to heavy pressing. But since I'm toning back in the weight a little, I'll change it up, do flies first. But you can't do the same workout every time, so it is worth switching it up at least every now and again. You know, maybe you've been fucking squatting first every quad day. Maybe try leg extensions first. Every arm day you start with heavy pushdowns, maybe you start with light rope. You know, it's just, don't get too locked into one routine. Like it's fucking, you know, ordained by a higher power. You know, I could do any random ass lift or I could just go up to anybody and say, what chest movement should I do next? Like, imagine if every time I switch machines, I just ask somebody what I should move to. As long as all the sets that I did were hard, it'd still be a good lift. I'd still have a pump just as good as any other. So don't forget, you know, before picking a certain movement or certain whatever, make sure all your sets are good. And it's going to be hard to have a bad workout. But moderate weight, flies, good pace. I'll actually go just a touch heavier. Yeah, a few more. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. One more. No. 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 Okay. That's your drop center. All right, solid start. Now I want to do some kind of pressing. I'm not sure what, but let's uh, let's find out. Definitely not barbell or Smith. Uh, that guy's using the chest machine. Let's just jump to whatever it ends up being. I tried incline bench. I put two plates up. I didn't feel anything, but it just felt a little funky. All right, the last thing I want to do is push it too hard, too quick, re-pull. But instead, I think a superset into pressing should feel pretty cool. So, you know, however many reps it flies until I feel satisfactorily fatigued. Like, I'm not gonna go to absolute failure on these flies. The point is just to well, pre-exhaust me and then jump over to this press. And that's where I'll really burn out. So the benefit of the pre-exhaust, when I move over to the press, I won't need so much weight. I'll already be a little weaker. So right now that's kind of the name of the game in terms of not hurting myself is making the weight heavier than it really is so I can stay on the lower end. No. That was a good set. Obviously not like as crazy as I usually go, but I think I'm gonna switch from this press to the one to my right. That one just feels better. I'm getting a lot of front dealt with this one. Come on. Let's repeat that a few times. Yeah. 
One more like that. I think I'll just do a straight set for this one. Let's just finish with some cable flies and that'll be it. I thought I was gonna do shoulders, but I'll save them for next chest day. All right, another drop set. So first, cable press. I'll kind of bend forward. And like, it'll look like the, it's the same setup as if I were to do a fly. But instead of reaching way out here, I'm just gonna fucking press. Then drop the weight a little bit, switch to just downward flies. I think two of these, the chest is finished. A perfect medium rare. Okay, actually, I'm just going to finish with a set of flies. Let's pose down. I miss heavy pressing. I miss it, I love it. It will return, but in order for me to get back to that state of being able to throw around a bananas amount of weight, I gotta heal my ass up. So, didn't feel like I tweaked anything, and I got a good chest pump. So, that's as good, that's as much as I can hope for. You know, beyond anything, beyond muscle stimulation, I wanna make sure that I'm not doing any extra damage, right? I feel like a doctor. Do no harm. First, do no harm. But let's see how we're looking after just moderate weight and a lot of flies slash lighter squeezing movements. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you tell me. You fucking tell me. Oh my goodness. Mm. 
No. No. Woo. All right. So again, I feel like damaged area right in here pretty deep. So that's what I'm careful of. That's what I'm really keeping an eye on. But everything else feels fucking sick. A little bit of striations. I need to get fucking heavier so these start going away. Because I almost feel like a proper bulk should be like putting yourself in a fucking cocoon. <laughs> or you kind of get surrounded by your protective layer of body fat. And then once you shed that layer on your cut, you get to reveal what you built underneath. So in my mind, like lean bulking is cool. Gaining weight without body fat. I mean, hell, that's the fucking, that's like the fountain of youth. But as far as I'm concerned, real bulks and real cuts are fucking necessary for real gains. At least for me right now. That's how I'm doing it. I'm not saying no other way works. Just say what I like. So car, home, food, 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 bed. All right. Put a spoon under your pillow. Put some ice cubes in the toilet. Make a wish because I think there may very well may potentially be a full day of eating tomorrow. Now, of course, that's that's not a guarantee because I have kind of a bad habit of saying I'm going to do it, but then not doing it. But you never know. Sometimes shit happens. Sometimes shit happens. So chest fully pumped, ton of blood in the area, which I means when it comes to recovery, that's what I like the sound of. I like the sound of getting a lot of blood flow into the area. And of course, not fucking re hurting myself. So chest was a success. And now I get to fuel up and go home and chill before obviously cardio in the morning. Arms tomorrow, tomorrow night. So cannot go wrong with an arm day. Uh, well, yeah. No need to talk about it now. I'll, I'll talk about it tomorrow when I'm actually doing it. So yeah, I put two plates on the the incline bench. Did a couple reps. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there yet. So let's chillax a little. Wait for uh, wait for everything to feel nice and sturdy. But until then, everything else is sweet. Legs. Oh, dude, I'm getting excited for my next leg day. I gotta get some barbell squats going. Once you see the newest uh, hostile leg day video, or it's me, Ben, and Fuad, that's the machine I was talking about. I'm st my quads are still fucking thrashed. Oof. We were really pushing it. That kind of that sort of opened my eyes to the fact that I've been chilling out on my quad days. I do need to do, um, well, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but I need to, I think I want to at least transition my quad days into being a bit more pressing emphasized, you know, because I love leg extensions. I've got moderately sized quads from doing them, but then again, I've been doing mainly leg extensions for a very long time. So in a way, I think that stimulus may be not maxed out, of course, the primary factor of growth, apart from, you know, a certain, having, once you have a certain muscle, a certain amount of muscle on your frame, obviously your growth potential is going to slow down. But the main factor is food, of course. I could have training that was a bit scrappier than what I do, less intense, but if I ate more food, I'd still gain weight. Not to say don't train hard. But I'm just saying you can train as hard as you want. You can be the hardest training dude in the world. But if you don't eat enough calories to sustain that and build muscle, you're going to stay the same size forever. Uh, but there is something to be said about this. Just 
feeling of fully loaded quads from pressing. I think I need to start leg pressing again. At least try it. And this gym has a couple of, well, it's got a pretty solidly stacked leg quad hamstring selection. Seated hamstring curl, which I like. It's one that I enjoy. Laying hamstring curl, as well as, I don't know, I haven't really looked at the leg presses, but they've got a few. They've got a sled style one. They've got a um, kind of a pendulum -y looking one. They've got a leg extension which like is plate loaded, so it's there's a lot of stuff which I think I've just been not utilizing. I don't think I've been skipping out. And you know, that's honestly even just saying that's kind of a cope. I think I've just been I've been being a baby about legs. You know. Cause for me it's very easy to hit failure on leg extensions. It's very easy for me to really kill it. On leg extensions and honestly I think that's why I prefer them so much and I pick them over something like lighter squats and lighter um, well any kind of other quad pressing movement just because it comes easy to me like hamstrings luckily enough I do think I do pretty good I think I gotta add some RDL work into though I really do love hamstring curls so this is my call to action my declaration of war to myself to add more pressing movements because let's say you do leg extensions to failure and you're doing little partials maybe you uh, get a little bit of assistance it's a hard set but it's not the same as um, like light squats to failure so hold me to it don't let me do another leg day of just leg extensions we gotta start getting real and pack on some mass onto these trunks Every year, a tree gets another ring on the inside. Everybody get you know, saw a tree in half, it's got as many rings as years it's been alive. So, starting now, let's say you cut my leg in half. It's probably got so many rings, evenly spaced apart from how my quads have been growing. But, ideally what's going to happen is I'm going to start biasing more quad pressing movements rather than just leg extensions. And fast forward a couple of months, a couple of years, well, let's just say months. This is an ideal state where my quads just blow up out of nowhere, right? Let's say you cut me in half then, those layers are going to grow. So month, month to month with this pressing, I want to see some results, right? This kind of, uh, this kind of reminds me of some Tom, not Tom Platt's, some Dorian Yates speeches, which of course majorly influenced by Mr. M, Mr. Menser, but doesn't take away from the craziness and the insane fucking results he got. And this makes fucking sense, right? If you're doing the same shit for week to week to week to month to month to month, the same workouts, the same styles, the same rep schemes, the same weight, you're eating the same amount of food. And even on like, he was bringing up a time scale of just month to month, even you now compared to you in one month. If you have no significant difference in the way that you look, then that means you're doing something wrong. Something, some variable in your equation is not high enough, not, uh, not intense enough, you're not resting enough, you're not eating enough, you're not training hard enough, you're not pushing yourself to the limit. Something's off. So if you've looked kind of similar, then you gotta sort of reassess, look at what you've been doing and say, okay, this needs changed. And if in all honesty, you just can't do it, like you can't really see what's wrong, then you've got to kind of have the humility to go up to someone you know who's pretty knowledgeable. Like, I can get a hold of some pretty fucking gnarly dudes now with all the fucking notoriety and following. So if I'm really having trouble, I can just pull up some kind of character and say, dude, I'm having this, this, and that causing this, this, and I'm not getting enough here, blah, 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 right. So, it's not, or no, 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 what am I thinking here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody who asks a question is a fool for a moment, right? But the guy who believes he's fucking 100% right on everything is a fool for life, right? So, there's absolutely no shame in being wrong and doing things the wrong way. But there is if you never change, right? It's like, 
sure, the best case scenario would be you've been training perfectly this whole time from the beginning. But the second base, best case scenario is trying to improve starting now in the present. So that's something that I feel like I'm certainly in the fucking middle of all the time. In no way, apart from a few key factors, apart from when I talk about calories, when I talk about how you need to do your cardio, and when I talk about how you need to push your sets as hard as you can within reasonable rep schemes, like, I don't know if it's really in your best interest to do like 50 rep sets. I think that's beyond the realm of solid growth. I think we all kind of get most hard sets should be failure around the 10 to, well, I mean, like I know I, this doesn't sound like me, but studies show, you know, six to 30 reps around there is about right. But eight to 12, I'd say that's where your real bread and butter is for most hard, heavy sets. When you go lighter, you can do a bit more, but it is whatever, right? Ah, uh, fuck, what was I even saying? Yeah, so apart from those factors, things that I say and I really do stand behind completely, which, I mean, fuck, if it comes out tomorrow, I've been absolutely limiting my gains, and I'd be, I'd be twice as big as I am now if I didn't do my cardio. And cardio is actually bad for you, right? Not that that's true, but, you know, if the other shoe drops and I'm like, oh, shit, that was wrong. <laughs> Shouldn't have been saying that this whole time. That's all I'm going to say. I'm like, yeah, that was fucking wrong. You know? So my approach to training over the course of, you know, the years that I've been doing it, it's changed. You know, there's no more fucking... 25 set workouts, right? I'm not doing 25 sets for chest anymore. And I'm kind of toning it down. I'm in the process of, you know, realizing the most, let's just say, longevity safe weights to use in the gym. Right? Maybe that, maybe 405 isn't necessary on bench. Maybe I should stay with the three plate range. That, that lesson's a little harder for me to learn, a little bit hard-headed. But right, over time, that's, I mean, that's the ideal state, to be in a state of change. Now, when I say that, I do mean positive change. If you're in a downward spiral, yikes, not ideal. Right? But that's where you kind of have to have an open mind. Like I was saying a second ago, if you're fucking locked into what you're doing now, and you won't even hear anything else if you can't even listen to an opposing opinion and say, I see where you're coming from. I like your explanation. That actually does make some sense. And now it's making me kind of question some things that I've been doing. Right? That's how everybody should be, man. There'd be so much less turmoil. I don't even mean just in the lifting community. community. I mean just in life. To be able to kind of understand somebody's perspective, put yourself in their shoes, realize maybe the factors and the variables that they've dealt with and understand why they've come to certain conclusions and why they act certain ways, then in a sense you can kind of detach any, well, any behavior that kind of doesn't itch you the right way, sort of rubs you, the, rubs you backwards and just say, man, fuck, dude, that's how he was raised. Not going not gonna to really bother me. If you run into somebody who's a total asshole and instead of letting any kind of negativity infect your mind and just being like, well, that guy's an asshole. Eesh, move on. Come on, way better, right? Develop the stoic information gathering, peace seeking mentality and all will be well around you. That kind of transition from lifting to just you know, mental thought process of somebody who's kind of relatively zen but whatever so either way good chest day if somebody tells you something keep your ears open you never know when somebody's just going to drop a fucking knowledge bomb lifting or not right. so it's in your best interest to just be be open to that shit right leave your net out rustle up some fucking stones in the river see what comes up say, okay, this is fucking cool, I'm going to hold on to this, this is fucking stupid, I'm not going to listen to this, blah, 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 right, repeat that process, and over a period of years, you should be a much more, 
I was about to say worldly, but not really worldly. Not wise either. Let's just say experienced dude. Experienced lifter. So that's enough of my little rant there. Cardio, arms tomorrow. I, uh, one more week and then I have another exam. So that'll be, you know, me cramming all sorts of formulas and writing out a big ass equation sheet. Don't even want to think about it. I'll save that for me in the future. I'm just gonna put that out of my mind for now. Hopefully you had a good lift. If you had a shit lift, let that sort of piss you off in a way and make you say, I'm better than this. I could do fucking a hundred times harder than that. And then come back stronger. And if you had a sweet lift, then sick. Enjoy it. Make, uh, make use of that stimulus and eat some good ass food and get some good night's rest before repeating the process tomorrow. So that is all from me. That's all from your friendly neighborhood, Sam. I will see you next time for maybe a full day meeting. I can't promise it because I'm kind of an asshole like that, but just maybe. See ya.